good evening, everyone. Uh, just uh, thank uh, Pastor for giving me this opportunity to uh, preach God's word. And um, for this evening, I want to teach on a very familiar passage of scripture. I'm sure it's familiar for all of us. And um, can we all be standing to in, in the honor of God's word as we uh, read through Ephesians chapter six, verse ten to eighteen. And uh, can we uh, read it responsively? So I'll take the first one, and then you can take the second. I'll take the third, and so on. Okay. Ephesians chapter 6, and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Let's read verse 18 together. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I'd like to thank you for today and thank you for this time that we can all come together as a church, Lord, to uh, learn of your word and to um, worship you, Lord. I'd like to pray now that uh, you'll use me in a mighty way, Lord, that uh, you use me as a mouthpiece for your word and pray that you'll grant each and every one of us attentive hearts that we may be able to take something away from the lesson. So pray all this in Christ's most precious name. Amen. So the title of my lesson this evening is uh, The Spiritual Battle Plan. So I'm sure many of you guys know that I've served the military. So for me, um, when I was preparing this lesson, it really kind of spoke to me because uh, I've been through the military and I kind of, I can really kind of relate through the lesson myself. Um, so uh, this evening, I have basically uh, three points. So the first point is, in battle, what is our motivation, right? Second point is, who is our enemy? And our, my third point is our, our, the armor that we put on, right? Sorry, I had a fourth point as well. And the last point that I'll be covering this evening is the battle plan. So first of all, the motivation. Here in this passage of scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, right, Paul was talking to the church of uh, Ephesus. And the thing is, when I read, read this passage of scripture, to me, he was talking to each and every one of us as believers as well, right? And he says there in verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. He didn't tell the, us as believers, he didn't tell the church of Ephesus, you know, to be strong because oh, we are good people, to be strong because we're mature, to be strong because we, some of us, you know, we're strong, I guess, or like, you know, be strong because of our own abilities. I'm pretty sure that's not what he said. That's not what he meant. He says, be strong in the Lord. Us as believers in Christ, we need to trust in God. Yeah, we need to trust in the Lord. Amen. We need we get the strength, right? We see we see here, be strong in the Lord, right? And we are strong because we obey and we follow God in his word. And see the second part of verse 10, and in the power of his might. How would you guys describe the power of God? Great, almighty, awesome? Honestly, I think that the power of God is indescribable. God was the one that spoke things into existence. He was the one that breathed life into us as humans. And he is the creator, after all. One example, you know, the sun that we see every day, right? It's so powerful that we get sunburned if we're out in the sun for too long, right? 
And the thing is, nowadays in the modern age, we use the sun, right, to gain like energy from it using solar panels, right? The sun is so powerful, but who was the one that created it? It was God that created it. He's much more powerful than the sun. <clears throat> but the problem is, many of us, even as believers, we just don't want to tap that power. We don't want to rely on that power uh, for our own use. Yeah? But instead, we rely on our own strengths. We rely on our own abilities. See, God is much more powerful than what he created. I'm sure he is very powerful. Let's turn to uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28, it says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. God is so powerful that we can rely on him for strength. So to me, God's power is our motivation one example of a really motivated person in the Bible was uh, the young shepherd boy, David. He was just a young boy tending to sheep. He wasn't a military man at that time. He didn't know any war fighting. He had no experience whatsoever, right? But yet, he faced Goliath. I'm sure all of us know who Goliath was. He was a giant. He was, in fact, Philistine's most feared soldier. He was the most feared warrior, right? But yet, David was confident enough to face Goliath. Let's turn to 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 45. In 1 Samuel 17, and verse 45, it says, Is it 17, 45? That's right. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled, uh, defied. So you see, David had that confidence in God. He had that confidence that he could draw on that power of God, right, to face Goliath. And sure enough, because he had put his trust in the Lord, he won the battle, didn't he? He was able to defeat Goliath. So my question for you t this evening is, are we motivated by God's presence in our lives as believers? In verse 11, it says, or verse 11 of uh, Ephesians chapter 6, it goes on to say, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. As a soldier, I know what that meant. So to put on the whole armor, um, in modern day context for me, if I was told to put on everything, that meant helmet, that meant my vest, that meant the body armor, the bulletproof, vet, uh, bulletproof armor that's in the vest itself, everything on, right? It meant that I'm actually going to war, right? It's not like a dream or anything, it's that I'm actually going to war. So it's about preparing to go out into the field for a real battle, but why? Does Paul say here that us as believers, we should put on the whole armor of God? It's because of a very real enemy that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. See, it's not this, this armor that, I'm, that we see here, right? It's not a physical armor. It's a spiritual armor because our enemy, it's, it's, it's in the spiritual sense. It's the devil trying to get at us in any way and form that he tries to. So it says there in verse 12, oh no, no, sorry, verse 11, that E may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. <coughs> <coughs> sorry, as I, could I get my cup of water there? I forgot about it. Uh, I've been having a bit of sore throat for the past couple of days. Thank you.
So you see, the devil is trying to use any means necessary, any method from every direction to try and get to us, right? So we all can see here that the devil and his works is our enemy. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. <clears throat> so we can see here that the devil is really hard at work looking for any opportunities, any weaknesses that we have to make us ineffective for God. Right? It's kind of like Goliath. He wasn't wearing his helmet. So that got him killed. Yeah. So now let's look at the armor, now that we know who our enemy is. Right? So we need to look at our equipment. So in, in the military, what we have is called force prep. So force prep is basically where we um, sit down, we unpack everything that's in our backpack, our equipment, our weapons, everything, and we lay it on the ground in a very neatly nice fashion, right? And we make sure that everything is accounted for. Yeah? So right now we're going to do our force prep. So in the present day, right, um, we have what's called a, you know, the belt that holds everything together, like the, um, our vest, our pants, our, our uniform, and our equipment. Yeah? So let's look at verse um, 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. But in the first part of verse 14, it says there, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Right? So, like I said, it's a very important part of the armor. It's what holds everything together, right? So, this belt here that we see, girting your loins about with truth, right? This truth is about our salvation. First, we must have um, that truth, right, of our salvation. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, It says there, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye was sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. <clears throat> As believers in Christ, you know, we've all heard about the truth, you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? And without this gospel of Christ, without this salvation, you and I, we won't have that help in battle, right? Why, why we won't have this help in battle is because we don't have our armor. We don't have our equipment with us because the belt is what holds it all together. Without the belt, we can't go into battle with anything. So first of all, what we need is the belt of truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Secondly, in verse 14, it says there, <clears throat> and having on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate is basically an item that protects you know, your vital organs like your heart and your lungs. All right? And as what uh, Brother Edmund said just now, is that you know, our heart is vulnerable. Right? So we need that breastplate of righteousness to protect us. You see, the blood of Jesus, right? because of the blood of Jesus as believers, we are justified. We are made righteous to stand before our holy God. Right? And we really need this armor to protect our hearts from sin and from the devil. Right? And we can look at a bad example in the Old Testament when this young shepherd boy, David, when he became a king, when he became King David, right? One day, he forgot to put on his breastplate of righteousness and that got him into sin. In verse 15, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. As a soldier, I wore um, combat boots. So this combat boots would um, cover me all the way up to my shin. And it's designed to basically protect me, my, my feet from shrapnel, from uh, basically getting wet, I guess. Because, you know, we've got to keep ourselves healthy. And once water gets into your boots, your feet start to get what's called foot rot. So, yeah, so boots, 
the boots that I had had drainage holes, which didn't really make sense because, um, yeah, the, wa the water's not supposed to go in, but they have holes there for water to go out. So, yeah. <coughs> but you see here in verse 15, all right, every believer in Christ must be prepared, right? They must be ready to share the gospel, to tell the truth of God's word. And the thing is, our duty is not to reach, our duty is to reach the lost out there. And our duty is not to actually fight the war. The thing about it, reaching the lost, right, is we have to be prepared, right? We don't necessarily have to argue or convince the lost person, right, to, in order to win them to Christ. All we need to do is just present the truth. So all we really need, right, is that preparation of the gospel of peace. Because once we're prepared with the gospel, right, we just need to tell them the gospel and God does the rest. In Romans 10, verse 17, it says there, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It's not about um, being eloquent in how we speak. Like for me, I'm... I'm actually really nervous right here, right now. But I'm trying my best not to show it. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's not about eloquence, but it's merely just about presenting the truth of God's word. The moment that lost person accepts the truth, right? It's actually the Lord that had prepared his heart or her heart to receive God's word. And that's the thing. As believers, let's be ready to share the gospel wherever we are. Because wherever we are, that is our field. That is our battlefield. In verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 6, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. See, it's very important to have the shield in battle. Um, modern day battlefields, we don't have shields, in a sense. Um, we don't use what you, know, you see in the medieval times where they have that bulky steel thing that blocks... Uh, blows from swords or like arrows flying at you. Nowadays, we just have body armor on our, on our like front, our back, and probably just the shoulders. That's about it. Yeah. See, <clears throat> the shield in this verse here, right, is the, um, the shield of faith, right? It is our faith in the Lord that will keep us safe and is what protects us. And the nice thing about the shield back then, right, was that you can move it in any direction, right, to protect yourself. You're getting shot at by, like, some archers behind you, you can just move your shield back, that sort of thing. And in this context, right, in a spiritual battle, the devil, like I said earlier, he's trying to find ways and means to attack us in every direction. So this shield of faith, right, is what can protect us from all those attacks from every direction. <clears throat> For example, you know, if Satan comes at you with health issues or relationship issues or even like temptation, like the devil's trying to tempt you, what would your response be? Do you feel comfort or safety behind your faith? Do you feel that comfort and safety behind that shield, which is your faith? So, why I actually um, decided to teach on Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 onwards is because I'm sure many of you guys know, uh, I guess a couple of weeks ago, well, yeah, a few weeks ago, I had uh, to go for an ultrasound scan uh, because I had noticed a lump on the right side of my cheek and I was feeling a bit of discomfort there. So um, I remember the night before, I actually, because that was after pastor had already told me that I was supposed to be giving a lesson on a Sunday evening. So that night before I found out about the, uh, that lump, I was actually up till two in the morning because this passage of scripture had just came to my heart. So I, I spent like several hours just like reading through it and uh, pondering on God's word. And um, I see it's a really good example in this case because with my faith, like it was a trial because um, the next day when I found out about that lump, 
my first reaction, unfortunately, was just um, fright. It was fear, you know, like, oh no, what's going to happen to me? Like, is, could it be the most severe thing that, you know, everyone dreads that word, you know, or I never thought that, oh, uh, God is in the picture, everything will be fine. But after, um, well, I had to be reminded by my dad, because when I found out about it, I called my dad straight away. So my dad kind of reminded me to, in a sense, be strong in the Lord. And after the call, I just kind of started reflecting on it. And one verse that came to my mind that I'm sure everyone, is, everyone knows very well is Romans 8.28. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I realized that I didn't initially, like, it was just a human reaction to um, that news, to, or like to finding out that, oh, something's wrong. That was just a human reaction. But after I reflected on it, I realized that, why should I be afraid? You know, I believe in God. I know God can do uh, wondrous things for me. So the thing is, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So whatever the outcome was, all things still work together for good. Verse 17, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, See, the helmet protects our head, <clears throat> and it protects what's inside our head, you know, the brain, right? See, the brain is what allows us to learn things, right? So the brain, for us Christians, you know, for us believers in Christ, it's what helps us to learn the truth of God's Word, right? It's what we use to absorb God's Word. It's what, you know, we use to think, what we use to make our decisions, right? So this helmet, all right? is what protects that knowledge that we have, right? So how I see this is that, you know, because this helmet of salvation protects the knowledge of our salvation in Christ, right? Like I said earlier, you know, it's a, it's a pity that Goliath wasn't wearing a helmet when he got hit in the head with uh, the stone. Uh. <clears throat> So in verse 17, and take the, is it, sorry? 18, yeah, yeah, that's right. In verse 18, oh no, 17, yeah, yeah, verse 17. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So in modern day, we don't use swords, we use guns. But um, that aside, um, <clears throat> see, the sword of the spirit here is the gospel of Christ. It's the Bible. Right? <clears throat> See, every other part of the armor that we've gone through is all defensive. It's what protects us. It's what we use to defend ourselves against the wiles of the devil. But you see, this is the only equipment in our um, force prep, right? That is an offensive equipment. It's used for attacking. So you see, the word of God is what we need to have with us because it's our only weapon. In the military, with uh, using guns and things like that, uh, we'd get in trouble a lot if we weren't holding onto our rifles. So if we were outfield and we went to sleep, right, our um, commanders, they'd like to go around and steal the rifles. Yeah. So after the first time I actually got in trouble for that, I decided, okay, I'm just gonna, because the rifle all comes with a rifle sling. So I wrapped a rifle sling around my body to, just to make sure that like, my rifle doesn't get taken. So I always had it with me. Uh, so you see, why do we need this weapon with us? Why do we need the word of God with us? When faced with false doctrine, with, when faced by influences in the world, when faced by temptations from the devil, right? We need to know the word of God so that we can defend ourselves, right? And that we can, you know, tell the devil and say, you know, this is what the Bible says. This is what I want to believe. This is what I want to follow. I do not want to follow you, 
right? So it's just like when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Every time the Satan, every time Satan tempted him, he just simply replied, "It is written in God's word. It is written." So now let's look at the battle plan. So when we see, let's look back earlier into um, the passage of scripture where it's in verse 13. Oh, sorry, no, in verse 11 it says that, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Just, I just want you guys to look at the word stand there, okay? And then let's look at verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. In verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. All right? So you can see here in this short passage of scripture that the word stand was repeated three times. All right? And let's be reminded again that this is not a physical battle, it's a spiritual battle. And the thing, because it's a spiritual battle against Satan, against the devil, right? This enemy is out of our control, right? This spiritual fight is not what we can handle. It's not within our abilities to handle. And that's why I started off by saying, you know, as believers in Christ, we have that motivation of the power of God behind us. He, God was the one that gave, I mean, he gives us that spiritual armor, right? And he's the only one that can fight the spiritual battle for us. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, um, we don't have to turn there, um, it talks about King Jehoshaphat when uh, the king and the nation of Judah was threatened by war from uh, the nations of, or the, the Ammonites and the Moabites. But the thing is that all God simply assured them was in verse um, 15 it says thus saith the Lord unto you be not afraid nor dismayed by any by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's the battle is not yours it's not ours it's not yours it's not mine it's God's the, all the nation of Judah had to do, all King Jehoshaphat had to do, was to stand and watch God, you know, God's salvation for them. So the word stand, right, it means the act of, def of holding one's ground against or halting to resist opposing force. It doesn't mean to sit around and do nothing. We've seen in Ephesians chapter 6 verse... 14 to 17, how it shows us all the different equipment that we need to put on, all the whole armor of God that we need to put on, right? But the thing is, yes, we have the helmet of salvation. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We, held, we, we get our, our loins with truth, right? We have the shield of faith to protect us. But is that armor of God complete? Is our feet firmly planted on the gospel? And just like modern day, for me, you know, is my, is my rifle with me? So is the word of God with us? Is the sword of the spirit with us? Are we ready to use it? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's not about sitting around doing nothing. Are we doing the work of the Lord? Are we doing our part by soul winning? Standing here before you guys, I cannot say that I have entirely done my part. Right? And I'm sure each and every one of us here today also can say the same thing, that we just haven't done enough, right? But let us be reminded that we should be trying our best to do as much as we can. Enough is not even enough. And like I said, 
you know, all we need to simply do is just share the gospel with the lost in, you know, in our different fields. And God just does the rest. And we see in verse 18 of uh, Ephesians chapter 6, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. <clears throat> Never underestimate the warfare that we face, right? And we should never underestimate the warfare that our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ face. And the thing is, when we communicate our battles to God, it's not some prayer. It's all prayer and supplication. That's why it says there, um, verse 18, with all perseverance. We just have to keep going at it, going at it, going at it, communicating with God and seeking his help. And not just that, think also about your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. They themselves are going through their own battles, their own spiritual battles. So that's why it says they are praying with all prayer and supplication for all saints. They're in the same boat pretty much as each and every one of us. So, yeah. For those who, to, to end off my lesson this evening, for those who may not have received Christ this <coughs> evening, um, you have heard the truth of God's word, you know, I'm sure uh, you've probably attended church for some time, or maybe you have not, but today you've heard God's word. But the thing is, have you trusted in God? Have you trusted in Jesus Christ? Have you decided to let Christ into your life to fight your battles? See, Christ came down to earth today uh, to, to die, to be buried, and, ro and he rose again for our sins, for your sin. And the thing is, he has already won the battle over sin and death. So the thing is, will you be willing to accept him as the one who won that battle for you? And will you be willing to accept him for, to be the one that can win all of your life's battles for you? Uh, to end off my lesson, um, there was one evening where my dad was having devotions with me and we looked at Psalms 62. So in Psalm 62, and in verse 2, sorry, let's start at verse 1. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Fellow believers in Christ, can you and I say that God is, our, is only my, our rock and our salvation? Can we say that he is our defense? Can we say that we won't be greatly moved because we have God with us? And for those who are not saved, can you, are you willing to, to let God into your life, to let Jesus into your life, so that he can be that? firm foundation and be the saviour from your sins. Uh, to close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I'd like to thank you for today and thank you that um, <clears throat> you've come down to earth, Lord, to pay the penalty for our sins, that you have um, won the battle over sin and death for us. I'd like to thank you, Lord, for giving us this armor, this spiritual armor, Lord, that we can put on, that we can use it, Lord, to uh, protect ourselves and to be able to um, <clears throat> use that armor for your glory. I'd like to pray that you'll help each and every one of us here, Lord, that you'll give us that um, motivation, Lord, that we can um, accomplish uh, things in our lives and that we can defeat all our battles, our spiritual battles in our lives, Lord. And that's only because you are here for us, that because of your might that we can 
uh, defeat all our uh, foes. I'd like to thank you for this evening, Lord. Uh, I pray that you be with each and every one of us and uh, you'll help us to think and ponder on your word, Lord. I'd like to pray all this in Christ's most precious name. Amen. Thank you.